morning, um, we want to be able to take note on some things, and um, I want to be able to describe that to you this morning. All right, um, Matthew chapter 20, when you get to, the, uh, to that part, I would invite you for to stand and read in the Word of God. We're going to be try to be, uh, we're going to try to keep you, uh, our, our goal here today is, watch it, to be done with everything by 3 o'clock, amen? Isn't that exciting, amen? Uh, I, I feel like that there's going to be uh, uh, an opportunity to go to church somewhere else, amen? But Matthew chapter 15, uh, as, let's look at verse 1 as we begin to read uh, in the Bible. The Bible says in verse 1, then came Jesus, uh, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus uh, have they, uh, excuse me, uh, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did it say us, prophesy of you, saying, This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth, and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude, and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered <coughs> and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Uh, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto, the, uh, unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye not, uh, do ye not, do, uh, excuse me, do not ye yet understand Whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast into the draught. <coughs> but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come here today, dear God, and we see a lot of emphasis, Lord, that you're making uh, unto these scribes and to these Pharisees. Lord, we would ask today, dear God, that for us to be able to understand these teachings, that we ask him, Father, that you would fill us with your spirit. Give us your wisdom today in what you're saying and that you're trying to teach today. And so, Lord, we ask that, Lord, as we look into this, we pray, him, Father, that you would help us as, uh, as Christians, as individuals, and help us to understand our eternal state. First of all, him, Father, that if we're not here or have never given our hearts to you as Lord and Savior, that would be the first step, Lord, that we would give our hearts to you. But then, if we have given ourselves unto you, then, Lord, help us to understand the kind of, uh, the, the kind of life that we're living before you. And so, Lord, we just ask for your help in these areas. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 
Thank you. Be seated. <clears throat> Here we find Jesus making some uh, some uh, quite conversations to these Pharisees, and uh, these conversations that uh, he's making uh, is simply that God is not sending uh, somebody to talk with these uh, Pharisees or these scribes, but you see this conversation uh, going back and forth and. I want to say to you tonight, uh, this morning that, uh, that everywhere we go, we find some uh, conversation with individuals. But today, uh, we see that what's created into this world is uh, beyond than just some conversational. And I'm saying to you today that this world that we see today uh, is, uh, is designed or it is working its way uh, to create in some image uh, image consciously uh, in this world. And so let me, let me back up and describe a, a little bit uh, what that means. And so today, people are more focused today on their image than they are focusing on their relationship with Jesus Christ. And I will say to you today that uh, today, everywhere you go, we find that there is a world that is trying to create an outward appearance, and yet, uh, that's not all that matters of life. Uh, I, I want to say in, in a very clear and understanding way that uh, you and I, <clears throat> as individuals, uh, we have a characteristic about us that simply makes us different from all other people. Amen. I'm glad that today there's only one Robert Boyce. Amen. And uh, I, I would say to you honestly that if, uh, if there was another Robert Boyce in town of Flat Rock and I was to meet him, me and him would probably get into a fight. Amen. And uh, I, I've just got to be honest to you. Amen. And uh, because I know that sometimes the things that I do in myself, it aggravates me. Amen. And, uh, and so I'm saying to you today that, uh, that there's an image, uh, a, a consciously image that is being driven into uh, our social things today. Uh, today we find that uh, folks are more concerned about their image on, uh, I, I, I like the fact where, and I, and, and I, I refuse, I backed away. I mean, let me, just, let me start over. Our society today are more concerned with what they put on Facebook. They're trying to drive some image that these are the, uh, the kind of people they are be by what they put on Facebook. And I'm just saying to you, as a preacher of the gospel, I backed away from Facebook. I mean, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even scan uh, you know, on Facebook. And I mean, I'm, I, I, I get away. My, my wife tells me uh, about, uh, uh, about something about our family. Yes, I'll go look it up. But as far as to find out what people are doing, I backed away because I want you to say, I want to say to you today that, uh, whatever you do outwardly, uh, that is not the image that, uh, sometimes that, uh, that we're to be. And so I want to, I'm, let me say this, in this and, and I, can, I can get it cleared up here. I know I'm struggling here, but let me, let me give you this story, uh, a story written by a woman uh, in the British Post. Now, check this out. Uh, as, here's a woman that uh, uh, the story is written by her, and she has spent $90,000 on plastic surgery to transform her face uh, from being a, 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 a for being ugly to someone to where she's beautiful. All right, and uh, guys, uh, in other words, when she started off, she was number one. When she spent ninety thousand dollars, she became a number ten. You with me? All right, all right. So uh, she spent ninety thousand uh, dollars to simply change her appearance in hopes to one day get married. Right, and uh, you know what happened? It worked. She got married, and then uh, her and her husband had a child, and uh, you know what happened? Well, let me tell you what happened. Uh, what happened is when the baby was born, the baby was so ugly that the, uh, that the husband uh, thought that she was cheating on him. Amen. <laughs> uh, and, and 
And so uh, I don't know where this is going, but I'm saying to you tonight uh, that uh, here's a woman uh, and, uh, that uh, simply spent $90,000 to change her outward appearance. And, uh, and yet her, her baby was born, and, uh, and, and I guess the baby took on her trait. She was ugly. The baby was ugly. And the father uh, of the baby simply believed that his wife was cheated on him, and she did everything to convince him that she was, uh, that she was faithful to him. And then finally the truth came out and said, Yes, uh, I, uh, I want you to know before I ever met you, I had a plastic surgery and, and, and all of that. And then the, uh, the husband wound up divorcing her because she had deceived him in marrying him, right? Uh, and so uh, you say, well, what's all that got to mean? Well, I, I just think that today that is a, a, a real important truth into our lives today. And, and so let me just say this to you, that uh, uh, you can't change uh, the outside, you can't take the outside of a form and change it, uh, change the inside. And so uh, what I want to speak to you today is effective changes come from within, right? Effective changes come from within. And so here's that, this story. Here's a, uh, a, a, a conversation between uh, Jesus and uh, between these Pharisees and the scribes. And go with me to verse 2, I mean verse 1 and 2, as we uh, begin to pull out the story. Verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees. Jesus didn't go looking for the conversation, but the conversation came to him. And, and uh, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps today uh, that may be a, re a, a real thing uh, that uh, everybody's going to be concerned after the service. And, and uh, before they're going to eat, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to happen. It's going to be a great disaster. Did you wash your hands today? After a message like that, you couldn't wash your hands? Listen, folks, I'm saying to you today, that's not what it's all about. That's not what we're here uh, to make you uh, to wash your hands. But here is this story, this conversation between Jesus and, uh, and, and these Pharisees and these scribes. And yet, they're coming to Jesus, and they're bringing this accusation. Well, uh, you, uh, you let your disciples to eat with unwashed hands? Right. And uh, and, and yet yeah, they're concerned about this thing. They're concerned, uh, may I say, about this outward appearance. They're concerned about uh, what the, the uh, Jesus disciples are doing. And so may I say to you this morning that you may have a wardrobe full of nice clothes. You may have some nice shoes. Uh, you may uh, be able to put on a nice suit. Uh, whatever the case may be, and may I say to you, that does not change who you are within. And so we see in that today that in our society that folks are concerned about their image. They are consciously concerned uh, about this image. And yet uh, God is concerned with an image, but he's not concerned with the outward image that you and I produce in the people's lives. God's concerned what we do uh, uh, every day, what we do from uh, it starts within our hearts. And God's concerned in how we illustrate those things. Now go with me to uh, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 19, and we'll pull out some things here. But uh, Matthew chapter 19, keep your place there in Matthew 15. We'll surely be back. But Matthew chapter 19 uh, look with me in verses 16 uh, through 20. Here is a story of a young man who was concerned about his image. Matthew chapter 16, uh, 19 and uh, verse, uh, verse 16 as we begin to read. The Bible says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. 
But if thou uh, wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which Jesus said, uh, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth uh, up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all uh, sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and, and, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, folks, I want you to get this because this is going to be a really driving statement uh, into our hearts this morning. Notice what, uh, what is being taken said in verse uh, 23. Uh, then Jesus, uh, uh, no, verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I want to say to you today that, that here's a, a story of a rich young man that had great possessions, and yet, may I say to you, honestly, it is what kept him from entering into the life with Christ. May I say to you today that here's a man, he was concerned about his image. He was concerned about selling all that he had and following Jesus. And I'm sure that he looked at the disciples and seeing them that they perhaps may have had dirty feet. Perhaps they may have had uh, dirty hands. Perhaps there were dirt all of them on their faces from traveling town to town preaching the gospel. May I say to you, those possessions sometimes keep us from entering into the life with Christ. May I say to you that this man, this rich young man, he was concerned about his images. Uh, he was concerned about the way people would view him. He was concerned uh, to be uh, simply uh, an individual that was recognized with the lowly state of Jesus Christ. You know, maybe today we find ourselves in the same boat that we have possessions in our life. We have these things of necessity, and we have these things of want, and, and, uh, and sometimes we have more necessity of things, of the elements of this world, than what God has really given unto us. And I want to say to you today that yet uh, we're looking for some effective change, a, a change that simply can be taken place, a, a change that simply can be uh, a, an everlasting change, a, a continual change, and uh, a change that something that you won't go back being the same individual. And yet I believe that today God is concerned about that kind of change. I believe that God is concerned the kind of change that we would have within. And he's concerned about our possessions. He's concerned of those things that are simply keeping us to enter into that life with Christ. I want you to think about today that Jesus would never let someone leave without meditating on the real matters. Go with me back to uh, Matthew chapter 15, and, and we'll describe how that comes about. But Matthew chapter uh, 15, let's look at verses 3 through 6. The Bible states here in verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he, and he that curse a father or mother, let him die to death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition, and I want to say uh, that as we look into understanding that these texts, these verses that are described uh, in the Bible, that here uh, Jesus is simply turning the toins, uh, turning the, uh, the elements of, uh, of their question. They wanted to come and accuse 
Jesus uh, about uh, uh, letting him uh, uh, have disciples with unwashing hands. They were concerned about the way they look. They were concerned about these, uh, these disciples that they were dirty and filthy, and, and yet they were to keep the tradition of the elders. May I say to you this morning that here uh, Jesus simply uh, spoke in verse 4, uh, I mean verse 3, and he says, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Here, you, you're concerned about uh, my disciples being uh, uh, unclean, but may I say to you, they may be uh, uh, unclean on the hour of their parents, but they're following me, and yet here you're accusing them to being unclean in their hearts, and yet you're the one that simply has a dirty heart. You're more concerned about some outward uh, show, some outward image, then you are simply keeping God's commandments. I think uh, this morning, as the, in verse 4, we move on, but notice how Jesus makes this mention. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that cursed the father and mother, let him die to death. Uh, you know what that is? I'll tell you what. Uh, it would help a lot of rebellion in our children today if uh, we were to keep back to the old traditional ways uh, back in uh, the Judaism nights and all that. And, and what they did is back in those days that if the if they son or the daughter was proven to be rebellious, they were to simply die of death. In other words, they were taken out and stoned to death. I'll tell you what a tragedy it would be that you and I disrespect our father and our mother. What a tragedy it be that we would understand that, uh, that God has placed his father and mother into our life uh, to not to simply uh, to uh, always babysit us in our life, but God has placed mama and daddy there to one day help us to stand on our two feet that one day we can serve God in the capacity that perhaps they have served. I want you to think about today that here God is concerned that uh, we, uh, what we treat mama and daddy, amen? He's concerned uh, with that. And yet, uh, it, may I say to you, it's a commandment that we, that we honor our father and our mother. Oftentimes, you find Jesus going, uh, making those comments. And so here we find that Jesus confronted the Pharisees, amen? The uh, they accused him, and yet he pointed out them to them that, well, they weren't keeping the commandments of God, right? Well, I tell you today uh, that when we understand what, that, what is the whole purpose of, uh, of uh, our life, what is the whole purpose? Well, I think of back in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 to 14, the Bible said, let us hear the whole conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. May I say to you today uh, that uh, uh, you, you, perhaps you hear, and, and I, we're not talking about in a whole aspect of everybody's not keeping their hands clean. That's not what we hear about. But we are here in some sense of reality, uh, some parallel uh, understanding to the Bible message is that are we here keeping God's commandments? Why are we here? Because in reality, if we were to finish out the Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, rather be good or rather be evil. And so here we need to understand that uh, if we're going to have some effective change, it's going to simply come from within. It's going to come by simply keeping those commandments of God. I want you to consider this this morning, that the scribes and Pharisees were the religious leaders of Israel in that time. And they, uh, and they made sure that everyone knew how religious they were. You know what they did? Uh, they did some things that simply went beyond proving that they were religious fanatics. Uh, they made extra wide uh, phylacteries for, uh, for their foreheads. And so simply, when they mourned, they had some different ornaments on their forehead that simply kept them, reminded them 
to keep the law. May I say to you today that uh, you can learn all the laws in the Bible, but unless you keep the law that God has placed in mankind, and that is to put the Lord God first. Uh, is uh, to have no other God before thee, uh, to, uh, to love God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, I mean with all thy spirit. If you don't keep that first law, you have broken every other law. And so you can do all your time uh, to memorize all the law, but yet uh, God's concerned that uh, what are we putting out there? What are we putting out to that image for people to show and to see how religious or how godly we are? We think about it in Matthew chapter 23. The Bible speaks this, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They're more concerned. Here, these individuals are more concerned about the way they look towards other people than what they really are on the inside. Not only did we find that, but they fasted openly and prayed long prayers in public. Go with me, if you would, uh, right there in Matthew. But Matthew, keep your place there in 15. But Matthew chapter 6, if you would, and find these same texts uh, uh, in the Bible. And we can see how God himself is proving some of these things. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Watch, the Bible uh, speaks this. Moreover, when you fast... Be not as the hypocrites of a sad and countenance, for they disfigured their faces, and that, uh, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face. See, uh, God is, uh, wants, uh, he doesn't, uh, he's not concerned about us doing things openly and getting some kind of show, getting some kind of attention. Uh, we can uh, add to that uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye, uh, for ye devour widow houses for a pretense, make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. May I say to you that these individuals not only had some phylacteries, of, uh, uh, but they had these open uh, and long prayers. And then also, they also made a grand show wherever they gave alms and, and to the poor. You're right there in Matthew chapter 6. Look with me in verse 2 through 5. The Bible says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. That they, may ha uh, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in, sec uh, seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the, uh, of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, folks, I want to say to you today that here we're talking about having effective change. Effective change is something I believe that we're all looking forward in our life. I believe that today there is nobody that attentively wants to simply uh, turn from knowing who Jesus Christ is, attentively being able to taste and see that the Lord is good. I believe that uh, every individual in here today uh, is some way attentively trying to do good. But may I say to you, the good doesn't always uh, have those rewards because the reality is, uh, what I'm saying to you, is that uh, there's times that you and I, we're going to suffer some persecution. We're going to suffer some trials. And it may seem that our good uh, isn't being uh, rewarded. And yet we need to understand who the rewarder is. Today, the rewarder is simply not mankind. The rewarder is not somebody that we know 
somebody that we're trying to show them, somebody that we're trying to prove to them uh, that we are upright people. The reward that we need to know is, as the Bible is teaching here, that if we go to God in secretly, if we go to God in prayer without anybody else knowing about it, but go to God, he will reward us openly. I want to say to you today that I believe that when we get a hold of what God is trying to say here, that our reward simply can be given by God himself. And so what is it about these effective changes that we're looking at? We know that, uh, we know that those who have tasted Christ uh, are not willing to go back into uh, those old, uh, that old nature, that old lifestyle. Those who know that God answers prayer, they don't want to go back to, uh, to the day that where they didn't understand that God does answer prayer. Nobody knows uh, that when they know who Jesus Christ is, when they know who God is, nobody wants to come and see the face of the Lord of glory and then turn around and go back and serve the devil with all their heart. There's nobody that I believe that is in this room that would simply be that kind of individual. We all want to have those effective changes. We all want to be able to be changed uh, from within and have, a, have an everlasting change in our life. I believe that today we're here because we want to strive further into our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so before we can get into that, before we can come to the conclusion of the message, what are some things that, I, that Christ wants to teach us this morning? And I believe that that's why we're here. Go back with me, if you would, to uh, Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to begin to pull out these few uh, points here, and these few things that I believe that we need to pay attention to uh, this morning. Matthew chapter 2, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 2 and 3. Here the Bible uh, reads this. Why do thy disciples transgress? the tradition of the elders, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Here these Pharisees and these scribes, they were considering, uh, they were more concerned about the tradition of the elders. And, and I know that there are some things that we hold on uh, to uh, from the youth of our life to the end of our life, but I want to. Uh, but I, 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 I want you to understand that uh, Jesus is also. He's concerned about what we're holding on from the youth and to the end of our life, and it's not the tradition of the elders. It's not the traditions of men. God's concerned that you and I hold on to His commandments. And that we continually uh, are involving ourselves into God's commandments. Because, may I say to you, it is God's commandments that changes us from within. Today we need to see that it should be in every heart of a Christian to be right with God. May I say to you properly that, uh, that I don't believe that we are here to simply... Uh, drive everybody uh, into a, a corpse or to, uh, to uh, shelter or to, uh, to push people uh, into a certain path. Amen. I don't believe that we're all created the same way. I don't believe that we're all, uh, I believe that today we're all a diverse people. I mean, I think of my wife this morning. I mean, uh, you, you could testify with me, amen, but uh, she's a whole lot more beautiful than I am. Thank you, brother. Everybody else is asleep. We'll back that up. And uh, we, we pray that uh, you understand that you're not so beautiful yourself when you know the real who you are, amen. And uh, we're more concerned about putting on Ole than what we are of trying to get close to God in our hearts. And I believe that today every Christian in their heart should have that desire to be right with God. 
Can I, 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 I've learned some things, and, and uh, uh, I've learned some things young in my life, and, and uh, I, I've learned that, there's, uh, that uh, uh, no matter how many teachers, no matter how many counselors, no matter how many uh, 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 babysitters I've ever had, nobody can ever make me serve God than by, by myself. Nobody could ever teach me to do right. When I, when I, I, I mean, I got saved 25 years ago, praise God, and praise God for that. And I was 23, and I was on my way uh, to a deep devil's hell. And, and I want you to know I was going to be down there with the murderers and the rapists and all of those things. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? I want you to know that I was the scum of the earth, and I want you to know that when Jesus Christ saved me, there was nothing good about me. And yet when he saved me, when he made uh, that difference, it wasn't because I listened to some teacher. It wasn't because I listened to uh, my mama and follow her advice. Uh, and when, I got, when I got saved, when, when that difference, when that, that change came into my life, it came when I accepted God's commandment. Now, I don't have a problem with God being on the throne in my life, Amen. I don't have a problem to submitting myself unto authority. Why? Because I've already done the ultimate. I've submitted myself unto Jesus Christ, and I believe that uh, he's the one I should submit myself unto because he's the holder of life and death. And I don't have to worry about submitting myself because it's already become uh, a, a habit. It's become a reality. And, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I want you to know if I'm wrong, I want to get it right. Not because to please you, but I want to get it right to please my Heavenly Father. I want you to know that today we need to understand that uh, it should be in the heart of every Christian to have things uh uh, to be right. And so go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's or often verses we go to, and sometimes they, they have no meaning because they're not placed into the right context. But uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, real quick. If you're not familiar with your Bible, I would say just sit there uh, real close and uh, be very attentive. Be more concerned of what God is getting ready to speak into your heart. But I want you to know that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17. Notice how the Bible says. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's not man that changes you. It's not, uh, it's not some good teacher, some good counselor. It's simply getting into learning what the commandments of God have. And I may I say to you today uh, that if you're going to have some effect of change uh, in your life, then it's going to be by keeping God's commandments. Our traditions, may I say, our traditions doesn't make you keep the commandments of God. What makes you keep the commandments of God is that you're making a choice to do it. Amen? Uh, I'll tell you, we, we, we're a young family, amen, and, and uh, me and my wife, we're, we're not here to put on some show and, and oh, look at us, you know, we, we, we got a beautiful family and we got to play a great testimony. Folks, it ain't all about that. I want you to know we're young in the family and God's teaching us, amen, and I believe with all my heart, we're learning and we're trying to mature and we're trying to uh, improve our life. Now, not to, uh, to get some favor from some mankind, but because we want to know that we're going to hear those words when we see Jesus cry, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, we want to know that uh, we're, not, uh, we're not the devil's servant. We're here. We're to be the Lord Jesus Christ's servant. We have no uh, intent to no uh, other instruction other than do what God has commanded us to do. I want you to think about that because effective change comes from within, not from without. And I believe that today that's what we want. We want some change that simply is going to be an everlasting change. And, 
I, I, I remember uh, Brother Hickey was preaching this morning in, in, in Sunday school, and I was just going back and, and remembering as he was, was preaching. I, I was just remembering some of the lifestyle, and some of the things that he was saying that I, I would go back and to remember uh, where I once was. I think about that. All the things that I went through, I wanted some change, and uh, and I, and brother, brother, I, I did it. I, I, I did the drugs, and oh, it changed me, but it never lasted. I would do some. I, I, I mean, I would do something, and uh, some people give me some advice, and and I remember uh, at 14 years old, and and uh, and you say, hey, uh, you want to overcome your problems, then you go ahead and and you uh, you put a candle on the radio, and you do some hell fire, uh, uh, some five hell marys, and all of that, and and uh, I want you to know, uh, I was stupid enough to follow those instructions, and I went and I did that, and I remember seeing the candle slide across from one side of the radio to the other side and it freaked me out enough to say you know what that's not right it was no change that I was looking for because it, uh, the change that uh, simply I had this uh, deep dark uh, demonic impression but way before I ever knew what any demonic depression was really about I know that it, I just didn't want to involve myself and I said to myself I would rather handle my problems on my face than to go and do something like that I want you to think about that because we do things we hold on to things in our life, and, and we think that uh, this something is going to change me. It's going to give me uh, some endurance. It's going to help me to overcome some things. And, folks, we do these things. We, we hold on to the things of our life like the rich young man, and he didn't want to give up his wealth. And yet, those are things that kept him from entering into that life with Christ. I want you to think that today here we're, or looking for some effective change. And yet, we need to understand that traditions cannot give us that change. I think about also this, that our outward appearance is only meanfully, can only be meanfully in our life when we simply have an inward devotion to God. Oh, I want you to know, I've met a lot of tragedies in my life. I've met a lot of hardship in my life. And and uh, I was talking to an individual the other day, uh, just yesterday, and uh, a preacher that I met a few years ago. And I was just speaking to them that, uh, that uh, uh, the guys that are my age and the guys that I grew up with, I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, they didn't drink out of the same fountain that I did, amen. Uh, I believe that I, I got the uh, fountain of youth, and, and uh, when I look at them, and, and they were at the same age as I am, and, and man, they look old and crepit, amen. And uh, I'm saying to you, I mean, uh, I'm only just barely in uh, uh, over my 40s and so forth and uh, wherever age I am. But, uh, but I look at them other folks and they look 20 years older than I do. And I, I begin to think, well, what made the difference? What changed everything? Uh, what, what made a difference in my life compared to their life? Uh, why do they act like or look the way they do? And I want you to think, but what God put upon my heart is that, inward devotion i believe that today uh you and i uh we have that inward devotion it would slow some things down in our life and it would help us to remember uh and to get a hold of some things uh, to really realize what is really important and so today if you're looking for some uh effective change it's going to be a change through that inward devotion go with me to uh back to matthew if you would matthew chapter 15 Look with me in verse 8, if you would. Notice how Jesus is making this comment uh, to these Pharisees and these scribes. And notice how he's making this, uh, this simply change here. But he says in verse 8, This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. May I say to you, if you want some effective uh, change today, if you want some uh, lasting change in your life, 
Uh, it's going to have to be more than uh, some uh, lip service. It's going to have to be something more than some eye service. It's going to have to be a heart service. It's going to have to that you and I can look unto God. And uh, number one, we can understand that we are to keep his commandments. Number two, uh, we, we go uh, to God in the inward devotion to say, uh, and, and we go to God and say, Lord, I don't know how to keep your commandment, but God, will you teach me? Will you help me? Will you show me? Will you not give up on me? Help me that I can do right before your eyes. I think there's a difference there, folks. I believe that today, that uh, we, as we understand that an outward appearance, uh, that's not going to give us some uh, change. That's not going to uh, put it on some uh, wardrobe. I just had to break it down to my wife a few weeks ago, try to give her some hints. Say, honey, my birthday's coming. And I'd like to have some new suits. She said, you already got two in the closet. That you never got sized. I know, but I need two more. May I say to you, putting on new suits is not going to help me to be a better pastor. Putting on new suits is not going to help me look any better. But I will tell you this, that when I begin to get on my hands and knees and say, God, I don't know how to do it. I don't know which way to go. I don't know how to handle the problem. I can't handle the pressure. And I already got it. I don't know how to handle it. But Lord, if you'll help me and show me and help me to get it right. That's what I'll do, Lord. That end with devotion. Jesus said that, uh, verse 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. May I say to you, you want a meaningful a meaningful, everlasting change in your life, then go to God with some devotion. Take God and add his word and say, God, help me to know what you have for me in my life. Help me to do it right. And then third of all, I think of this, outward reform is possible only when there is truly an inward change. You want an inward change? You want a uh, change in your life? Listen, folks, may I be honest to you today? We live in a devil's world today. We may, we may have this nation. We may have uh, some history of God once, once reigned in this nation. But today, may I say to you, may I just be honest to you, we live in a devil's world today. It got nothing to do with God. And, I, and, and if, you want, if you want to look for some uh, change in your life, then you're going to have to go inwardly. You're going to have to do it. Notice what he says in uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. Almost done, but look what the verse says. Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defile the man, but that which uh, cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. You're saying, preacher, what do you mean? Go with me to verse 19. Uh, verse 19. For out of their heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, death, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. May I say to you today, those inward things are what we need to be concerned about. We're looking for some outward reform today. But in reality, God is saying that we need to look into that inward reform. You know, I don't know every heart in this uh, church. I can't answer for every heart. I know for me that uh, I want to know uh, people, and I want to be uh, as friendly as I can, and, and I want to be as kind as I can. And, and sometimes we all have those same problems. I bet you if I get to know you, you would probably say, you know, I have some of the same problems you do. You know what's going to make the difference? Us looking into the inward parts of our heart. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't only just simply keep the commandments of God just to simply say, well, I'm going to keep those commandments of God. Therefore, I'm over you. That's not about keeping the commandments of God. I keep the commandments of God 
so that I may honor him in my life. When you're, when you're unkind to me, the Bible teaches that I should be kind. When you don't, uh, when you don't like me, the Bible teaches that I should pray. Uh, when you, uh, when you ready to, uh, 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 you know, we, when we uh, get upset and we, we deal with confrontation and you don't like what I say and I don't like what you say, well, I just got to tell you, that's what the devil wants, right? But if we begin to handle things inwardly, right, with the word of God, because God is the one that has the right answer, amen? I don't know if I'm making sense to you today, but I will say to you today that if we want some effective change in our life, it's not going to be by tradition. It's not going to be by some outward change of, uh, of our appearance. But if we're going to have an effective change today, it's going to be by simply us looking inward, keeping God's commandments, following him. You know, may I say to you today? That's why I like coming to church. Sometimes I get out there in the world and I get busy and I get involved and, and all those things, trying to provide for my family, and, and it's so easy to get off track. But I'll tell you, the best thing that, I, that helps me that I can come and I can come to church and I can, I can be around other believers and, and uh, be able to feel that presence of God and be able to get underneath the preaching of the Word of God and and even though sometimes it just doesn't sit right with my heart, but I'll tell you, when I, when I listen to what the, uh, what the Bible's being preached and I began to take God inwardly and began to place him uh, there in my heart and began to look at that, okay, what are some things that I'm struggling with? And when I look into verses, I mean, uh, verse 19, no, uh, I go back with me to Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Here's what I'm saying to you. Uh, when I see these verses, uh, I don't even know where I'm at. Uh, verse 19, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it says, um, all right, I'm there now. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts. <laughs> why? 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 Why we can't get a hold of that? Why can't we get a hold of that? I mean, we're, we're so busy uh, telling everybody the people we don't like and so busy talking about somebody else. But why don't we understand that, hey, if I'm talking about somebody else, what, that don't, what they don't like about me, why can't I accept what people don't like about what me? Hey, you see what I'm at? And the Bible says evil thoughts. Well, I, I need to go inwardly and be concerned with myself. Man, maybe I'm having problems in my life because, well, maybe God's trying to show me something. I don't know. All I know is that we're all in the same boat. A lot of times we allow strife and contention to come into our lives, whether we're Christians or not, all the principles still apply. If we're not saved today, well, honestly, you have no help until you surrender to Jesus Christ. You can go to all the teachers and the counselors, but there will never be any help. But until you and I, even as non-Christians and Christians, until you and I surrender unto Jesus Christ, there will never be any help. And so today, I want to encourage you that we make much of Jesus. I think of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you're lacking today, may I say to you, we can go to God inwardly, say, Lord, I need some help in my life. I want that effective change, and I'm asking that you would help me to make those changes that they can last. You know, I've been learning some things in my own life. I've been, God's been pointing some things out, folks, and I would ask if you would do anything for me to pray for me, but sometimes I, God has pointed this out and that, here in the, another month, my little baby boy, Josiah, is getting ready to be eight years old. You know, I get to spend more time with him right now, and I get to uh, look into his life, and he's already becoming a young man. And may I say to you, he's pleased, but I wonder what kind of evil thoughts there would be in my life 
what kind of Indians would be in my life? What would be in my life to turn him from looking unto the Lord? May I say to you today, we need to be concerned inwardly about what we're doing before God. Don't let it be said, folks, that we're turning people away from God. Every head bowed, every eyes closed as we open up to the invitation. We're going to ask the pianos to come and open up a time of invitation. Maybe today God has spoke to your heart and you would say, Lord, I see some things inwardly in my life that I need to get right. And you want to be able to have that time. And, and uh, we want to be able to open up to you where you can. Today, we want to be able to take every heart uh, at its nature and understand that uh, if you're not saved here today, you could simply surrender yourself unto the authority of Jesus Christ. You confess that he is the Lord and that he is the Savior of the world when you repent from your sins. If you're willing to turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and make him as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that when you confess your sins and your faults before him, and you invite him, say, Lord, come into my heart and change me, change my life, and make that difference for me, make that every, uh, every effective change. When you do that, the Bible says you're to, uh, you become a new creature. And if you're, able to, if you're here this morning and you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart and yet you're struggling with some things, you can come to the altar and get it right. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. And Lord, as the uh, song leader begins to play, we ask this morning, dear God, that you would help us. Lord, we pray, dear God, that for this day, for this day, you would help us, Heavenly Father, to know our relationship before you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As every head bowed, every eye closed, we stand to our feet. As we begin to stand to our feet, Brother Ron. Page 380. Page 380. 380. Page 380. There's a great day coming, a great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for the day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a bright day coming, a bright day coming. There's a bright day coming by and by. But his brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for the day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a sad day coming. A sad day coming, there's a sad day coming by and by. When the sinner shall hear the doom to part, I know you not. Are you ready for the day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready? For the judgment day. All right, amen. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, dismiss in prayer, and as we do, uh, we're going to pray for the food. And so, if you want to stay back, uh, be be uh, be much to appreciate if you did, and uh, be able to take this time of fellowship. And and uh, so, uh, you go, we're going to go right into the fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to go right into eating, and uh, so we're going to pray right now. And as we do, uh, we want to be able to uh, for the uh, guests to come up here i mean uh, to go on out there in the front and we're going to get all that directed in the back so let's just pray and head on back there in the back amen heavenly father we come before you today and lord we thank you heavenly father rather we are visitors and rather we're uh members or rather we're christians or non-christians we thank him father that lord that umbrella of grace that you've given to us lord uh in this uh in this age lord we know that the church age is coming to an end 
But Heavenly Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that until then, Lord, you would help us to continue moving forward, to continue to grow in our faith and to know you better as Savior. So, Lord, we do ask today, dear God, that you would bless this food and the fellowship. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would fill us our hearts, fill our hearts, Heavenly Father, with your words, with your truths. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come over and look at this song. I might want you to sing the chorus. I'm going to sing this tonight. This is in G, too. You probably know it. Uh, I'm going to do One Day I Will in June. <laughs> 